Welcome to HIT Podcast, HIT, Human Resources, Insurance, and Technology. I'm your host, Toby Kennedy. Every week, I'm trying to bring together relevant information, curate it all into a tight, bite-sized, digestible weekly hit for you to be a good follow, to be a worthy member of your weekly engagement. And with that being said, let's jump right into your weekly hit. It is sponsored by Montage Insurance Solutions. This week's weekly hit is going to be a little bit of an industry update. For example, HealthNet, if you hadn't heard. HealthNet is replacing their first health network with the Cigna PPO network for their out-of-state business, which is a pretty big step for HealthNet, to be honest with you. A lot of times we find them bumping up against the larger national carriers and maybe not being in as great of a consideration, sometimes has to do with their out-of-state PPO. So as of November 1st, 2023, that's moving to Cigna. The other thing that we wanted to talk about very briefly before we get into the meat of today's presentation is the updated HSA number. So the minimum deductible has gone from $1,500 up to $1,600 from 2023 for the new IRS release numbers for 2024. And the out-of-pocket maximum itself has gone up as well from $7,500 to $8,050. But the big one for me is the maximum contribution levels. Those have gone from $38.50 for an individual all the way up to $41.50. So a, a decent sized jump for the individual. And on the family side, it's gone from $7,750 up to $8,300. So those are the maximum contribution levels for HSA plans as released by the IRS for 2024. Now, we are coming up on the one year anniversary of July 1st, 2022, which was when some of the TIC or transparency in coverage stuff really started to hit us. Back in 2020, Health and Human Services, Department of Labor, the Treasury kind of resurrected parts of the Affordable Care Act surrounding transparency and coverage that had kind of gone a little stale. And what they said was basically, look, we need to look at transparency and coverage. It is an ongoing focal point in health insurance in this country to see if we can sort of compare and kind of peel back the wrapper on some of these costs going on behind the scenes. So at the end of the day, there was this requirement that said, hey, you guys need to post machine readable files that show the world and that can be extracted and sort of compiled what a lot of these behind the scenes costs are. Initially, it really seemed like employers of all kinds, no matter what, were going to have to post a link on their own website, which caused a lot of frustration because A, first of all, not every employer has a website, but B, a lot of times they're like, this has nothing to do with what I do, uh, you know, what's going on here? But FAQs came out down the pike, question 22 clarified, if you're fully insured, you and your liability really kind of ends if you can just get a written agreement from your insurer that says, we're going to post that. Okay, so we've got the machine readable files because to be honest, you don't really have access to that information as an employer. They need to be updated monthly. They need to be available without a password, without a username, just sort of go in and grab this data. And it's difficult for employers. So on the fully insured side, we've been able to satisfy the requirement now we have clarity simply by getting that agreement from your insurer. On the self-funded side, it's different. First of all, you cannot transfer the liability. You can work with your TPA, you can work with organizations to try to help you, and they can sort of take care of the requirement for you. But if they fall down on the job and they don't do it properly, the liability is ultimately still on you as a self-funded employer. So that's something to know about the difference between being fully insured and complying with the TIC or transparency and coverage requirements and being self-funded and complying with these requirements. January 1st of this year had another wave of sort of these staggered um, coming down the pike ways that this, this law is rolling in. 500 of the top costs needed to be added to. And then in January 1st of 2024, all of the costs need to be added to these machine readable files. So all of this is sort of done in the name of being able to price compare, 
being able to log in and see what all's going on behind the scenes. But from an employer standpoint, we just want to get back out in front of this and say, hey, clarifying questions have come down the pike. And we now know from an employer standpoint, if you're fully insured, all you really need is a written agreement with your insurer. If you're self-funded, you can work with TPAs, but you can't get out from under the liability. So you just want to pay a little bit more attention to that. When I say self-funded, I mean technically built on a self-funded chassis. So yes, that does include level funded. That includes any of those sort of funding mechanisms where the plan design is filed as self-insured relative to a fully insured plan. That's all the time we have for this week. Quick industry update for you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. And until next week, make this the best week yet.